Hey there, I'm Bree Pettis, and this is a little video about the history of plotters. So you have computing, you know, start in the late 50s, primarily to like figure out bomb trajectories. And then in the 60s, you start seeing mainframes that were used in the military, enter the sort of enter colleges and stuff. And in 1966, CalComp, California Computer Products, launched a plotter that uh, allowed, had these little uh, holes on the side to, to move the paper, and it had a, a sled going across with a pen on it, and you could make pictures. This was very exciting because all of a sudden, instead of just seeing something on a screen, you could output something and hand it to somebody. Um, then, uh, so this, these start getting used, but um, you know, you basically were in the era of like having to program the computer with punch cards, and, and so there's very few pieces of work from this time. Uh, they were used to like compute the shape of a body and see if it would fit into a Boeing airplane. They were used for a couple other experiments and uh, the sort of the, the, the computer art of the, the 60s and really the 70s is pretty, pretty minimal. There's not a ton of it out there. Um, but when the 80s roll around, it gets very exciting. So in the 80s, you have HP come in and HP showed up and they had the capacity to make injection molded parts with very high tolerances. And they saw that there was a market for this. The Apple II Plus had come out, the Commodore 64 was on its way at the end of the 70s. And so we start seeing consumer computers come out and all of a sudden, people are willing to, you know, if you're willing to spend like five grand on a computer, you're willing to spend more money on a peripheral to actually justify its use. So uh, plotters came out with the idea of being able to make like bar graphs and pie charts, and you could get uh, special pens for transparency. So you could do like an overhead transparency and project it onto a wall, very exciting for presentations. And, um, HP invested heavily in plotters, and you can tell that in the way that they're made. They were engineered, and there's very, very clever stuff in here. And they took advantage of their injection molding facilities, and they were doing really cool stuff with the plastics as well. They were including fiber in the plastics to keep them so that they would shrink less and maintain their shape more. And they were, and because of that, they were, you know, had high costs for the like tooling, but they had low cost per part. So that they, because they were thinking big, they were able to invest in, in the technology and really come out with some interesting stuff. So you start having the, uh, the, I think it's, you know, you have the early ones, the first, the first ones they had that HP came out with were more like uh, charts that you would put a, a, a piece of a roll of paper and the paper would roll. And as it would come out, it would like, you could chart something over time. So you could hook it up to like a, any, any sort of measurement instrument and it would just chart like how much voltage was coming out of it. And it would do a little like a um, you know, mountain graph. And then they came out with these, uh, you know, basically typewriter si sized machines that would the first one had two pens and it could go and they were on each side. The carriage could go to one side, pick up a pen, then it could put it back and it could go to the other side, pick up the other pen. And you had two color uh, plotter uh, plots at that point. And that gets pretty exciting. Then you have the 7475A and that's got six pens that it can hold. And then, and, and it's eight and a half by 11. Now that one's actually 11 by 17. So the first one was 8 and a half by 11, next one's 11 by 17. And then you really hit the prime time plotter in the 80s with the HP 7550, which are right back here. These are the, these are the Cadillacs of the time. Um, these have eight colors. They're just absurdly reliable. A friend of mine found one at a junk shop. It had actually been left outside for years. And he just cleaned it up, plugged in, worked fine. These things are just tanks um, and they're great and they're repeatable. That's very consistent. So you can, you can do things over and over again. Then. So you can do prints and, and have them be relatively consistent. Um, so that's sort of the, the golden age of plotters. Now, daisy wheel printers and other types of printers start to come out, dot matrix printers. And, uh, and, and by the end of the eighties, 
uh, you were really just seeing plotters being used in architectural firms and, um, and, and mechanical engineers, and that's about it. And they, they'd sort of ceased to be mass market devices. Now, those ones that were for the architects, those are the draft masters, and they are awesome too. Um, they're so great. And these get used maybe until the mid 90s and then HP comes out with inkjet technology and applies that to large format. And then we're basically done with the plotter age, you know, and um, uh, maybe 10 years ago, the evil mad scientist laboratory folks, uh, uh, Lenore and Wendell, are, who are just excellent humans, uh, they came out with the AxiDraw. The AxiDraw is a single pen plotter that's uh, very robust and simple, but allows you to um, do really interesting things with plotting, and it's just USB plug and play. These babies take a little bit more uh, fussing to get the uh, RS-232, like, to the like whole comms between your computer and the plotter take a little while to make your computer act like a 1980s computer to behave. There's an Inkscape plugin, which is great, or you can use a uh, real term, which just directly connects to it and sends it over, which is also a good way to deal with it. But uh, the AxiDraw is a great, if you're just wanting, if you're jumping into this and you wanna just get involved, probably the best machine you can get straight off the bat is, is the AxiDraw, because it's available. It just hooks up over USB, it's an Inkscape plugin, and uh, by all accounts, it just works. And the, the um, Wendell and Lenore are just awesome at, at giving support too. You can jump on their Discord and be like, I have a problem. They'll be like, oh, do this and it'll be done. Um, so that's sort of a, 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 bro a quick broad swath history of the plotter. Uh, it's, I would highly recommend um, just for your own enjoyment to dig into a document that you can find on the HP Museum. Uh, that's a, an article that was made by all the people who worked on the design of the HP 7550. You can just see how much pride they take in their work, how much they love it, how much attribution they give to each other to showcase each other's work. And um, it's a delight. So make sure to read that as the follow on. All right, signing off.